Hello, I'm Debbie Allen. And I'm LL Cool J. And our new comedy in the house is on NBC Monday. And this Monday, Dave's World and Melrose Place are both repeats. Mm -hmm. And my promise to you is we will never show you a repeat and we will never raise your taxes. How can you promise this? Hey, I'm not running for office. I just want them to watch. <laughs> oh, in that case, everybody that watches in the house gets a new car. They're lying! Just watch In the House Monday on NBC after the Fresh Prince. Then check your driveway for your new car. It won't be there. Man, this dude is off the chain. 1995 was a very big year for LL Cool J. He signed a five-year deal with Def Jam Records, released his sixth studio album, Mr. Smith, which is his most successful album, and a great lesson from start to finish. He married longtime girlfriend Simone, and they are going almost 30 years strong to this day. And he started his first and only sitcom, In the House. It goes without saying that The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is one of the most culturally significant sitcoms of all time. And I would argue that it's the greatest black sitcom of all time. Running from 1990 to 1996, The Fresh Prince reached audiences across the world with great humor, a wonderful cast, and incredible emotional moments. With The Fresh Prince coming to a close, NBC were desperate to find a new black sitcom to take its place. And I do mean black sitcom, as NBC still has shows like Friends, ER, Frasier, and Seinfeld, amongst others, doing gangbusters. But you gotta capture that urban audience, know what I'm saying? In the House is the creation of Winifred Hervey, sort of. She's a writer and producer who's done work on TV shows such as The Golden Girls, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Cosbys, and a year later would go on to create The Steve Harvey Show, which would see much more success than her first endeavor, through no fault of her own. In the House wasn't actually her idea, but a show pitched to her by Quincy Jones, as the two worked together on The Fresh Prince. NBC wanted to recreate what was lightning in a bottle with The Fresh Prince, bringing in LL Cool J at the height of his popularity. According to Hervey, LL was already signed on before she wrote the script, so a lot of what you see was written specifically around him. They paired him with acclaimed actor and professional dancer Debbie Allen, who made her name doing acting and producing for fame, the movie and TV series, and A Different World. Throw in a couple of child actors, and we got ourselves a sitcom. This is about your banana, I was gonna replace it. Are you a burglar? Yeah, I'm the banana bandit. I'm gonna be featured in the next Batman film. For those that don't know, there are two different versions of In the House. And I'm going to start with the original that ran for two seasons from 1995 to 1996. The first season only ran six episodes, premiering on April 10th, 1995 on the NBC network right after an episode of The Fresh Prince. Hervey says that In the House was a mid-season replacement, which is why it's so short. A mid-season replacement is exactly what it sounds like. They're essentially filler episodes held by the network in case a TV show gets canceled early and the network needs to fill a space. Shows like these aren't held in high regard by the network, meaning that In the House was already off to a bad start. Season two would air in September, of that same year, running 20 episodes. This would also be Hervey's final run on the show, as NBC declined to bring her back. What's interesting is that out of those 26 episodes, Hervey only wrote five, making you wonder if she was simply a fall guy if the show did poorly. Well, check this out. They do good work around here. What are you talking about? They got it all wrong. It's supposed to say LL Cool J, then Will Smith. All right, all right, all right. Watch that. <laughs> ah, you happy? Yeah, that's better. Catch NBC Las Vegas Monday. Give me that remote. Hey, boys, you chill. In the House revolves around pro footballer Marion Hill, played by LL Cool J. Marion is a star rookie who plays for the Los Angeles Raiders and blows his knee out after a nasty tackle. With no guaranteed contract, 
Marion decides to rent out his home for some extra cash flow while he lives in the garage. Fun fact, the Raiders were in LA from 1982 to 1994, meaning that when In the House started in 95, they had already moved to Oakland. Marion isn't your typical ladies man, as he completely reformed himself, being vegan, practicing herbal meditation, spiritual healing, and as a pacifist, but you'll still get glimpses of his rougher side. This was an intentional move by Herbie, who wanted to write a character that was the complete opposite of what you think someone like LL Cool J would be. Handsome, very masculine guy, but the character is named Marion, and he's very nurturing and holistic, even though he's a football player. And LL is charming and charismatic enough to make it work without coming off as corny or pretentious. After finding out her husband is having an affair, the newly divorced Jackie Warren, played by Debbie Allen, and her two children rent out Marion's home. Jackie mirrors Hervey's real life, who was going through a divorce at the time, and decided to write that into the script. Jackie's initially shocked that Marion's living there, but it was included in the lease, which she apparently didn't read. The joke being that Jackie assumed she was renting from a woman, but I've never heard about renting a place without meeting the landlord first. Her kids take a liking to Marion as a pseudo big brother, and Jackie hires Marion as their caregiver. Debbie Allen brings a lot of energy in the show, and she's giving it her all, which is good because her and LL are the ones carrying it. They work really well together. Allen is also the real life sister of Felicia Rashad of The Cosby Show, who makes an appearance in the second season. Maya Campbell and Jeffrey Wood play her children, Tiffany and Austin Warren. Tiffany is written as a Hillary Banks type character who complains of having to downsize from their lavish lifestyle due to Jackie now being a single parent. She gets into typical teenage hijinks of sneaking out and lying. Her character does progress and mature in the later seasons. Austin is the nerdy little kid who spends the majority of his time with Marion, usually asking him for life advice or looking for a friend to hang out with. The kids are the weakest part of this show, with the funniest parts being Marion constantly irritated with having to deal with them. Marion, once she gets out there, she'll see how much fun it is and maybe she'll get motivated. Don't you people have relatives? <laughs> the episodes are pretty formulaic, full of plots you've already seen. Remember the good old, hey friend, do you mind pretending to be my significant other to make someone else jealous or some other ridiculous reason? Other episodes involve Marion's or Jackie's relationship woes, none of which has any long-term standing on the show. Don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing the show for being formulaic. I'm letting you know not to expect anything fresh or groundbreaking, and that goes for the later seasons as well. Both theme songs were composed by Quincy Jones, and calling them songs is very generous. They're more like commercial jingles. NBC Premiere Monday begins with a hot season opener. The funniest Fresh Prince ever when Will burns down the house. Oh, no! Then we take Ashley, throw in Carl, and put him in the season premiere of In the House. The possibilities boggle the mind. Two premieres both on NBC Premiere Monday. The biggest issue plaguing In the House throughout its entirety is the inconsistencies. Not only in the writing, but the constant revolving door of characters that come and go with no explanation. Like Jackie's boss, Heather, who's sort of a main character in season one, but only appears in a small portion of season two and is never seen again. Clayton the Cowboy, who's Marion's best friend character for a cup of coffee and did not fit this show at all. John Amos as coach, who sticks around for three seasons. Honestly, I forgot he was in the show at certain points considering they barely use him in the third season. The most notable moment so far is the Ashley and Carlton Banks cameo in the first episode of season two. Marion and Carlton find out a boy is dating both Ashley and Tiffany, but their idiotic way of handling it backfires on them. 
NBC wanted so badly for this show to work, they made In the House and Fresh Prince canon in the same universe, making it all the more confusing when they ended up canceling it at the end of season two. Then Marion's in love and it's time to meet her roommate. Ah! Tim Wayans is back. Take off the cuffs. One kiss. I'm gonna have to chew my arm off. In the house after Fresh Prince, NBC Monday. So what happened? In its first season, in the house averaged 11 million viewers, placing it in the top 50 percentile for TV shows that year. Keep in mind that In the House was coming off a constant viewer boost from The Fresh Prince. The following year, In the House fell into the top 100 percentile, averaging 9.4 million viewers and actually falling below The Fresh Prince, which was in its final season. I know you're thinking a 9.4 is pretty good for any TV show. On the other hand, The Fresh Prince never cracked the top 10, but kept itself in the top 20 percentile, averaging 14 million viewers for about four seasons straight. NBC wanted the next Fresh Prince, and not a pretty good TV show. So I can only assume NBC wanted to cut their losses early. We did a year and a half over in NBC. After that, they felt like the show wasn't right or it needed to be redone. UPN gave us a two-year offer, and uh, Quincy Jones and David Salzman decided to go with this two-year offer over at UPN. During the interim, while people would decide what they wanted to do with the show, Debbie Allen was in the process of working with Steven Spielberg de developing this film. And uh, I decided to keep doing the show. And they brought in Alfonso Ribeiro, who used to play Carlton Banks on The Fresh Prince. And they brought in Kim Wayans, who's one of the talented Wayans siblings. And uh, we still doing our thing. It wouldn't take long for In the House to find a new home, as it was picked up the same year by the United Paramount Network, which you guys might know as UPN. The channel had just started in 1995 and was looking for programming to bring in viewers to their channel. In the House was run in the same block along with other shows like Sparks, Malcolm and Eddie, Homeboys in Outer Space, and Moesha, making UPN a staple for black television. You the real MVP. Unfortunately, only three million of those viewers migrated over to finish the series, and it will continue to drop viewers until its final season. But for a new channel, I'm sure UPN was ecstatic. Hopefully that gave you guys some insight. Back to the show. With In The House being on the new network, changes were going to be made. The biggest being the cast. Debbie Allen and Jeffrey Wood were written off the show with Jackie getting a job in Nashville and taking Austin with her. However, Tiffany will be staying with Marion to finish out her last year at high school. All of this is told to us by the way. We don't actually hear from Debbie Allen and we never see her again. Tiffany spends most of her time with her friends Raynell and Carl, played by Gabrielle Carmouche and Ken Lawson, who you'll recognize as T from the Parkers. He's really funny in that show, and this one. All right, Ronald McDonald! <laughs> Not Ronald McDonald, man, I'm Dennis Rodman! <laughs> like I said, Tiffany matures a lot in the fourth season, becoming the voice of reason amongst her peers, helping a single mom reconcile with her baby daddy, and pushing away two romantic interests instead of stringing them along like the old Tiffany would. Tanya Harris, played by Kim Wayans, made her debut early on in season two, being Marion's physical therapist turned crazy stalker. Tanya eventually goes to therapy, getting the help she needs, apologizing to Marion, and becoming his friend. She's my least favorite character in the show. Her psycho gimmick overstayed its welcome in season two, but she scaled it back once she became a regular, although she's animated way too much. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes you just shake your head. I like her better when she's subdued and clapping back at the men for their idiocy. More Maxine from Living Single and less female Marlon Wayans. Joining them is Alfonso Ribeiro, as Carlton Banks. I mean, his character is named Maxwell Stanton, but he's playing Carlton Banks. Maxwell is a doctor who made a crucial medical mistake, costing him his professional career, so now he has to work at the sports clinic that Marion uses. He breaks the news to Marion that his knee will never fully recover, and his pro football career is over. With nowhere else to go, Marion decides to buy the clinic 
which goes up for sale. Since Marion can't get a full loan without a proper doctor working for him, he teams up with Maxwell and they go into business. It's a clever way to reboot the show without changing too much. The new characters are a better fit, but I never bought into their friendship. For me, there was never a connection that made me feel some type of way by the time the show was over. Not to say that In the House isn't funny. I mean, LL Cool J by himself makes the show watchable. I just started my own business, so I'm running a little low on cash, but I know a nice little Scottish place down the street, McDonald's. <laughs> Season 3 premiered on August 26, 1996, and Season 4 premiered on August 25th in 1997, both running for 22 episodes each. There is a divisive opinion on which version of In the House is better, and I guess it depends on what you're looking for. In my opinion, Season 3 is what In the House should have been from the start. The jokes hit more often, and the relationships centered around our main characters are fleshed out. With Marion operating a sports clinic, it opens up tons of athlete cameos from the likes of Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield, Derek Fisher, Kobe, and many more. After two years on UPN, the final season, consisting of six episodes, were dumped on syndicated television, which means UPN licensed the entire show out to a bunch of smaller networks across the world. At least that's my understanding. The final season of In the House feels very slapdash, and I'm going to go into spoilers, so if you plan on watching In the House, it's on Tubi, then skip to this timestamp for my final thoughts. The end of season 4 felt like a natural conclusion to everyone's story. Maxwell gets married to a woman named Mercedes, Tiffany has found the love of her life, Tanya seems to have found herself a nice man. And despite Marion being single, he has hope one day that he'll find Mrs. Wright. Then season five starts on a really weird note. You know, before I left for London with Graham, she told me the WNBA made her an offer that she could not refuse. The WNBA? This was never mentioned before. Max and Mercedes are off doing their own separate marriage counseling subplot. Then Carl and Raynell move in the house because they got evicted. I didn't realize they were living together. And by the end of episode 2, Tiffany is written off. So now it's Marion, Carl, and Raynell in the house. Sure. I, uh, what the fuck? Season 5 was so unnecessary, and it almost ruined the show for me. But it didn't affect my grading on the show, and I can at least say that In the House got a proper ending. No diggity, no doubt. No doubt. On UPN, it's comedy with a splash of attitude. Then on In the House, it's LL versus his mortal enemy. I want to hit you so hard you don't wake up to Afro's come back. Moesha and In the House. Starting Tuesday night at 8 on UPN 44. In the House is a show that didn't come together naturally. NBC made a poor attempt to manufacture a hit TV show. It's quite the shame because season 3 and 4 are solid but it could have been so much more. Putting LL Cool J in a family sitcom might have sounded nice on paper, but it didn't translate on screen. A living single type of show would have been more appropriate. And In the House never touches any deep subject matters like The Fresh Prince. There is a two-part episode featuring Clifton Powell bringing up Marion's past as a drug runner, but it's never referenced outside of those two episodes. Compared to other black sitcoms that came before and after, In the House is simply mid, and that's okay. It's a show you can play in the background and fall asleep to. Just don't think too hard or you'll get mad. On a grading scale from F being downright terrible to A being top quality, I give In the House a solid C+, right there in the middle. No as the years went on, In the House became less of a priority for LL, and it simply became a platform to help promote his music as a few of his songs are featured on the show. He will continue acting, appearing in Halloween H2O, Deliver Us From Eva, Into Deep, 
and gaining a long-lasting role on the cop series NCIS. Debbie Allen would take small TV and movie parts here and there. In 2011, she found herself a comfortable role on long-running series Grey's Anatomy, where she's still on to this day. Maya Campbell will go on to do a handful of low-budget indie films. Unfortunately, life took a turn for the worst, with Campbell suffering a lot of mental distress and turmoil. I won't go into any details out of respect for her as an individual. I simply wish Maya Campbell the best in her recovery. Jeffrey Wood hasn't done much acting since leaving in the house. On the plus side, that little nerd got jacked. Ay, 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 ay. Kim Wayans does some acting here and there, her most notable work being a writer for My Wife and Kids. Alfonso Ribeiro is mostly doing hosting gigs and commercials now, with the occasional TV show directing and an iconic appearance on Dancing with the Stars. And you'll definitely see him on any kind of Fresh Prince related material. And that was In the House. Overall, I enjoyed my time watching it. Let me know what you guys think. As always, y'all stay frosty. I'm out. No diggity, no doubt, baby. No diggity, no doubt, huh?